Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. On May 12, 2013, a series of powerful solar flares began to erupt from sunspot AR-1748. Over a period of 48 hours, the sunspot produced a total of four X-class solar flares, the most powerful type of solar flare known to science. The proton storms that solar flares and CMEs sometimes produce can potentially affect life on Earth, as evidenced by the one-hour radio blackout associated with its latest solar activity. Some CMEs have astonished mainstream scientists by reaching the Earth in a matter of minutes. To understand the potential dangers of such events, let us first consider the electrical model of the Sun. This model says that the sun is a highly charged ball of plasma. The charge is reckoned to be somewhere around 10 to the 19th coulombs. Now, a CME is an event that, for some reason, indicates a rupture in this skin of the sun. And so the sun kind of burps out a huge bubble of high energy, high intensity plasma. When this material streams away, it's quite spectacular and it can be dangerous to life on the earth. CMEs are categorized into three categories, a C-class, low energy class, M-class, which is the lowest class that can really affect things on earth, our radio transmission and satellites and so on. And then the high energy class is the X class. And X class CMEs uh, can be very dangerous. You need to understand that there's a, almost an infinite directions from the sun that things can go in. And the earth is like this tiny little BB uh, miles and miles away. So we would almost never get hit by a rifle bullet fired from the sun. But since CMEs come off in a huge bubble, why we can be intersected. But most CMEs, of course, miss the earth. Now, talking a little more about the structure of the sun, a salient point is that the sun has a radial electrical field and gives off electrical particles, which are called the solar wind. And these things accelerate away from the sun. And when they pass the Earth, they are going 200 times as fast as they were when they left the sun. It's just absurd to think that there is anything other than an electrical field that can accelerate electrical particles in that fashion. Now, one of the most dangerous aspects associated with some solar flares and some CMEs are what are called solar proton events. And sometimes we can get a burst of proton particles called a proton storm. And these can do great damage and they arrive not in one to three days, but within 15 to 40 minutes. This just amazes establishment science. To gain perspective on the potential threat a CME might pose to Earth, let us consider the historical precedent provided in 1859 by the Carrington event. In 1859, two astronomers in England one in particular named Carrington, I happened to be watching the sun and witnessed a huge flare and real strong brightening of visible light. Soon after witnessing that, why then the Earth experienced severe magnetic effects. 
And at the time, of course, we did not have the same technology that we have today. Probably the highest level of technology that we had that was affected was the telegraph lines, telegraph service. And those, of course, picked up what's called the geomagnetic induction current. That caused some havoc with the telegraph service and disrupted it partly at times during the event, but also it allowed the operators to use the telegraph equipment without the batteries being connected. So a CME that engulfs the earth kind of buckles our double layer and it produces spectacular aurorae in the north and the south. The bad part is that an event of the magnitude of the Carrington event would, in the blink of an eye, send us back to the Bronze Age. And here's why. The modern power grid, especially in the United States, and the grids are similar elsewhere, have power lines attached out overhead at distances crisscrossing nearly 200,000 miles. This grid acts as a giant antenna system which would easily pick up the electric currents induced by a geomagnetic solar storm. We've already experienced a sample of this when in 1989, Quebec experienced a power outage because of a CME. The Hydro-Quebec outage resulted from the linked malfunction of more than 15 discrete protective system operations. From the initial event to complete blackout, only one and a half minutes elapsed hardly enough time to assess what was occurring, let alone to intervene. The U.S. electrical system includes over 6,000 generating units, more than 500,000 miles of bulk transmission lines, approximately 12,000 major substations, and innumerable lower voltage distribution transformers. All of these can serve as potential geomagnetic-induced current entry points from their respective ground connections. So, at high risk today is our network of extra high-voltage transformers that operate approximately 340,000 volts and above spread around the grid. These house-sized transformers cost around $12 million, and of course their manufacture is highly specialized, and the replacement delivery time takes about a year. And wouldn't you know, they're manufactured in India and China. A Carrington event would bring down our grid, which is very much outdated, and it would generate powerful GICs, or geomagnetic-induced currents, that would burn out these extra high-voltage transformers. The North American grid meltdown effects would be like this. The monetary loss resulting from just a year-long electrical blackout across half of the United States could easily be measured in trillions of dollars. The loss of electricity disables much of our civilized life support system, including potable water production and delivery, waste and sewage treatment and disposal, refrigeration would go down, hydrocarbon fuel production, transport and delivery would cease to a large degree. Of course, heating, the modern heating equipment in residences and businesses are all initiated and controlled by electricity. Food production would be disrupted, food storage, transport, delivery, and preparation affected. Firefighting, rescue, and emergency service would be almost totally degraded. Communication because cell tower and cell phone functionality would be gone in a few hours. 
television transmission would be a goner with only limited radio surviving for those with battery receptivity. Financial transactions would be immediately limited to hard currency mode with the normal banking services completely lost. Computer, telecommunication and network functionality almost completely gone and finally, medical treatment severely hampered, with medication supply to run out in about a month. Now, harking back to the Carrington event, that event was so severe, people that were connected to uh, the wires, the telegraph uh, system, and other equipment uh, were shocked if they were grounded. Some were stunned, and the reports are that some were even killed. So, uh, if we dropped everything, if our government said, forget about doing much of anything except let's all concentrate on getting our grid back up, the most optimistic estimate is on the order of weeks or a few months because no business wants to have a stockpile of $12 million house-sized replacement units sitting around. The U.S. would be severely set back if we did have a Carrington event. And to put it into a global perspective, if 50% of the electrical grid around the world went down, we just probably wouldn't recover for a long, long time. We would be back in the Bronze Age. So, what to do? NASA is currently implementing a project called Solar Shield, which is designed to provide warnings to vital systems after an Earth-affecting CME occurs. Since CMEs take one to four days to reach us, from the sun. An early warning system has some possibility of ameliorating the effects. If we were really wise, we would shut down and disconnect vulnerable equipment. But that's a massive step to take in disrupting the whole fabric of our lives and the fabric of our businesses on just the possibility that those things are going to be at risk and going to be affected. Also at risk is satellite functionality. That would further eliminate communicational capability. The global positioning systems would go down. I will leave it to your imagination to think about doing without electricity for three months or longer. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.